Hey guys, it's Ubalo again, and uh, in this video I'm going to be teaching you the basics of uh, WinDBG. Uh, basically a debugger that uh, has support to debug uh, .NET applications. And it's actually very useful because uh, you can debug uh, obfuscated applications. So you don't need to deobfuscate them first, uh, and that's very helpful in many cases. And also applications that uses uh, uh, JIT hooks, you can uh, basically crack this, them as well, much easier than using Reflector. Alright, so uh, I'm using the same uh, crack me here that I used uh, last time. Oh, and I forgot to mention last time, uh, if you don't know what the crack me, what's in the crack me, you, can, you should run it sandboxed, because you never know if it's malicious or not. But anyway, let's get going here. Alright, so uh, start up WinDBG. And um, just uh, open the file here. All right. So once you have this loaded, uh, I'm assuming you have everything set up for uh, the uh, program and also the symbol path here. But uh, I might make a video on how to set it up as well, but uh, not right now. Okay. So never mind these. Uh, if there's some error when you start it, just never mind them. It's nothing dangerous or anything. Alright, so the first thing you want to type is uh, x s x e l d, uh, and depending on the version of the .NET framework that the application uses, uh, you type a different thing here. So if it's uh, .NET 4.0 or above, you type C L R, but if it's less, you type M S C O R W K S. But in this case, I'm using C L R because it's a 4.0 application. And uh, what this command does is basically uh, puts a breakpoint uh, right at the start of the application. So, uh, yeah, when you start the application now, it's going to breakpoint and you can do whatever you want. Alright, so uh, if you press uh, type in G, that's the command for go. So let's do that. Alright, so now see uh, we get a, a break here at clr.dll. And uh, this is a good sign because now we know uh, the application was using. Uh, open 4.0 and also uh, now we need to load the uh, SOS uh, extension of uh, WinDBG to debug the .NET application alright so you type uh, load by SOS CLR I also like to type load SOS I'm not sure if that's necessary but uh, I used to do it this doesn't hurt to do it so uh <coughs> alright uh, now we have loaded the SS SOS uh, extension we press uh, G again, to start the application. And we can see we have an application running here, and uh, the, the debugger in the background. And uh, we're just going to test here what's happened when you press login. Alright, so we get a message box saying you failed. And uh, if there's a message box in the application, that's a uh, good sign because it's easy to break points and uh, easy to pinpoint where you want to uh, debug. So uh, we're gonna put a breakpoint on uh, uh, message box. So uh, type uh, BP for breakpoint. Message box W. Uh, all right, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, you need to. You can uh, type uh, threads. And this will list all the uh, managed threads running in the application. And in this case, we have two threads. Uh, one, uh, this is the apartment state of the application. Uh, thread, sorry. Uh, if it's STA, it usually means it's a f Windows form. Uh, so this is what we're looking for. Uh, I'm not, sh I'm not really sure what the MTA finalizer is, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go for the STA. So to jump to thread uh, ID zero because right now you can see we are at 8 and uh, you do this squiggly thing 0 and S alright so now you see it changed down here so we are at uh, thread 0 and uh, now when we are in the manage thread we can type out our breakpoint so type uh, BP message box W and BL you can list all your uh, breakpoints so now you can see we have a breakpoint for the uh, message box API here and uh, yeah, so basically the next time there's a message box in the application, uh, it's gonna break 
and uh, we can do some debugging so we know m where we are. Alright, so um, we can press G again to make the application go. And if you press login here again, you see we get a breakpoint zero hit. So uh, the breakpoint was hit here. And uh, now we can uh, view the call stack of the application, typing CLR stack. Make sure you're in first uh, in the same thread here, the zero managed thread. Otherwise, th this won't be possible. But yeah, all right. So this is the call stack, uh, and this is basically all methods or functions that have been that has been called in the application. So uh, the most recent call is uh, on top, and uh, the first call is here at the bottom. So we can see this is the entry point of the application, at least the managed entry point. So this is the first call, and uh, up here is the last. So uh, there are some strange calls here that you don't need to uh, think about. It's just some uh, internal .NET stuff. But uh, if you go a little bit further down here, you can see this. It's called to messagebox.show, and uh, this is what we're looking for because uh, when you press the login button, it shows a message box. So this is probably where that message was shown, and uh, the method right below it should be the uh, yeah here ptn login click. So uh, uh, yeah, for some reason they got an error up here, but uh, let's just never mind that. Right here it works fine. I just typed in a CLR stack again to get the same list here. So right before the message was show, we get a uh, ptn login click here. And this is the method we're looking for because, uh, yeah, this is most likely our crack me uh, button here. Alright, so uh, let's copy the uh, IP and type IP to MD and then put in the IP here. And you get some uh, information about the method. You can get the name, uh, class, uh, token, method table, MD token, module. And uh, if it's jitted, uh, I don't know if you know, guys know what it is, but uh, basically it's gone through the G JIT engine, so it's been converted to a native method. But uh, that that's just a good thing. So uh, let's. This is the most important part here, the method description. So if we copy this address, we can uh, get the IL code of the uh, method. So uh, you do that by just typing dump IL and then type in the method description. Alright, so we can see the method body here. And uh, it looks like we got the right method here because uh, it takes the uh, text user control and the text pass control and calls the verified credentials. And uh, yeah, I went over this last time, so uh, just last la watch the last video if you want to know what this actually does. Alright, so this is the uh, uh, jump we're looking for here. Uh, because this is yeah what decides if it's gonna be you failed or if you're in. So what we were looking for is to change this to be our false status. So it always gonna say you're in when you type the wrong credentials in. But to do that, we're gonna modify the uh, native code of the method. So to get the native code, you just type uh, u, and then the same the method description. Uh, there. Uh, Alright, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go through this uh, instruction by instruction because yeah, it's very long and uh, some of this stuff is just very annoying to read and not really necessary to know. But uh, we can see here it makes a call to uh, verify credentials. So let's see, we're around here in the IL code, uh, and if we follow it down here, okay, here we see uh, you're in, which is this. So right before that, there should be a uh, jump. Let's see. Yes, there's a jump if not equal here. And uh, so this is what we want to change. We want to say uh, jump if equal because uh, that's the uh, opposite of GNA. All right. So uh, you get the uh, address of the uh, instruction here, and you type just a uppercase A and the address. And now we're in the edit mode, so we can uh, actually edit the uh, uh, instruction here. And since it's a J and E, we're going to type J E because that's the offset. And then we need uh, the address that it jumps to, 
because yeah, we want it to jump to the same location. So um, there. Now you see there's no error or anything. It should have changed to JE. So just type uh, press enter again to get out of the Ed mode. And uh, let's uh, view the native method this again. Yeah. Okay. See, it's changed to JE now. So uh, basically, we reverse the if statement in uh, the native code now. So if we test the application again, press G. This is the last message box. So don't worry about that. And then just type in anything. Press login. Oh, sorry. It's the the we hit breakpoint, so we can we can actually remove the breakpoint now. Just uh, type BC zero. Uh, BC and the ID of the uh, breakpoint here, and then press G again to go, and it says you're in. So basically, that's how you reverse a simple if statement with the uh, wind uh, wind DBG. And uh, there's some stuff I didn't show you. I can show you, uh, for example, let's just jump to Fred here again. You can type uh, DSO to get. Uh, basically a little object object dump here uh, actually let's show you that let's mesh, uh, break one message box again and uh, press go and hit it again alright so now if we type uh, DSO again you can see uh, this is the two strings that were inputted into the application uh, this is the username and this is the password and uh, this is the mesh that it shows. So sometimes when you dump the objects here, you can uh, view some important strings. But in this case, there's nothing real of use here. It's only the message when you press the button and uh, your your own input. So this is not much use to us right now, but it can be very useful sometimes, uh, especially in uh, when the application is obfuscated because. Uh, you know, most of the characters hide the strings in the application, but if you dump the uh, objects right when you're at the uh, breakpoints, you can actually see them because at some point the application has to decrypt them and uh, have them in memory. And this can show them from there. Alright, so that's basically all I wanted to show. Uh, I'll probably make some more tutorials with this uh, debugger later. But uh, yeah, see ya.